Okay, so today I'm doing something really, really special with my good friend Brad Browning, the founder and creator of The X Factor. How are you doing, Brad? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a fight. I'm really looking forward to this video. Uh, thanks for agreeing to do this um, and for your kind words. <laughs> um, so basically, guys, what we're going to do in this video is uh, Chris and I are going to get in a fight, basically. We're doing a Chris versus Brad breakup questions. Pretty much. And we're going to be basically answering questions from our readers, and we'll keep, give each of our take and... Uh, see if we disagree and where we disagree because I'm sure we will Chris. Yeah, and I want to say that Brad is probably one of the only breakup experts out there that I would trust outside of myself, which is why I'm so honored to have him in here so I can pretty much destroy him, you know, and break up knowledge here. Now, I guess we shall uh, see, to, to kind of give see. you an idea, <laughs> an idea of what makes Brad Browning so special is he has authored the best-selling book, The X Factor, which you can find a link below this video so we are basically going ex-boyfriend recovery versus the x factor which is better and i'm just going to tell you right now it's ex-boyfriend recovery <laughs> it's not a bad program but uh happens i've seen yours too spied a little bit and it's pretty damn fine as well i think we're going to agree on quite a bit of stuff as well and then we'll duke it out over some of the things based on what i've read in your program anyway so <laughs> and yes thank you for the pitch uh yeah you guys if you do want to check out my x factor program click that link below and you will get access to my full video on the website there with lots of free tips. All right, Brad. So I think this is a question from one of the members of your audience. This person saying, right. why does my ex send mixed signals? One day he is all over me at a party and tells me that he misses me so much. But then when I text him the next day, like three times, he keeps ignoring me and never replies. That is so common. Um, you probably get the same thing every day. Uh, for a lot of your subscribers, readers, yeah. See, the, the thing is, you have to kind of put yourself in the shoes of the person who broke up with you, basically. So your ex, when they broke up with you, you know, they, they probably had, they struggled with it, right? It wasn't easy for them. Um, sometimes it can actually even be harder to be the person who is doing the dumping than being the dump e. And they're going to be on the same sort of emotional roller coaster um, as you are. So don't think that you know, just for your ex, it's it's easy because just because they they broke up with you. Um, they're going through the same struggles that you are in the wake of the breakup. They probably have conflicted feelings. A lot of the time, you know, their brain is saying, um, I shouldn't be with this person. I should break up and I should stay broken up. Um, and their heart is, they're going to miss you, right? They're going to, they're going to still have some feelings for you, even though they've logically decided that it's time to, to end the relationship. So uh, most often when this happens, it's because when you get those sort of you know, the, the I miss you's and the I still I love you and think about you, those kind of, of messages from your ex, it's in, a, it's in a time where they're kind of, you know, it's late at night, they're alone, and they're feeling those emotions. They're hurt, they're heartbroken, and they're just sort of releasing that by telling you. And then a day later, when you get the, when you're getting ignored or you're getting cold responses, that's when your ex is, you know, they're out with friends, they're feeling fine. And so that's why oftentimes you'll just, you'll just have sort of, your ex will be sending you these mixed signals because that reflects the moods and the, the struggles that they're going through emotionally as well. Do you want to disagree with me on that one, Chris? I will say, no, I don't want to disagree with you. I will add okay. something to it, though. I will say All a right. lot of times when you see someone having these mixed signals, I think maybe a little bit of the grass is greener syndrome is playing a role here. So, uh, absolutely. So I think maybe what's happening with this particular person, I don't it seems like it's a woman here, but I think what's happening with this particular person is her boyfriend is having this grass is greener syndrome moment where he's sitting there and thinking, oh, you know, I miss this certain aspect of her. And then he's right. acting based on the feeling he's having in that moment, which is kind of what you said in your point. But I think that's something to keep in mind with your situation. I wish we had a name for this person, but let's just call her Claire. Claire. It was, it was definitely a lady. I don't remember her name, unfortunately, but Claire's good. Yeah, that was. <laughs> uh, and I agree with you. And definitely, it is, it's basically um, your ex acting out on whatever they're feeling, right? You would agree with that? It's sort yeah. of just in the heat of the moment. Yeah, I think so. They are letting out those uh, emotions yeah. um, for sure. Yeah. What does this mean? Usually, I would say it's a good sign. Uh, in most cases, if your ex is sending mixed signals, hey, at least you know that, that there are times when they're conflicted, um, generally speaking, anyway. And then perhaps the times when they're cold or distant or ignoring you, you know, those are just sort of where their logic is overpowering those emotions or when they've got friends and family sitting there saying, don't reply to that text, don't, don't do it, you know, kind of encouraging them to, to stay broken up because that's what they think is best for them. So I would say generally it's a good sign if you're, if you're seeing that kind of mixed signals. 
Yeah, I would I would have to back you up on that. So I guess we're on the same side on this one. But I I'll pick yeah. a new I'll pick a more controversial question next. I got one for you actually uh, from one of my readers. If you're if you're up for it. All right. So the question is from Lisa, I believe, um, and she's actually down down in Florida as well, Chris. Um, <laughs> so Mrs. Florida Lisa's question is basically, what kind of dates should I be going on with my ex boyfriend? Well, it's a great, a, a great question because not a lot of people think about this, but I always like to look at research to try to back up everything that I say. And I really stumbled across this fast. I can't even talk today. I stumbled ac across this really fascinating research called the misattribution of emotions. So there was a study done where they took an audience of people who were watching a concert and they, before the concert started playing, they asked the people, okay, if you could rate the attractiveness level of the people who are playing the concert, what would you rate it at? And so they gave the people the numbers and eventually the concert started and the concert started playing and then there was an intermission. And then they asked the same question to the audience. How would you rate each member of the band attractiveness wise? And each member of the band saw a gigantic increase in their attraction levels. And what scientists think happened is they felt so much emotion from the music that they attached the motion to the right. thing that made the most sense. And so I think right. you can take a cue from this. Maybe take your ex-boyfriend on a date with a lot of emotion attached to it. And it doesn't have to be necessarily the a life or death experience type of thing. This can be something like going to a haunted house, something maybe an interesting cornfield maze. I, I'm, I'm in this weird haunted house craze right now for some reason. For the record, it's December right now, so <laughs> but Chris is still Halloween, so yeah. I know what you mean. I'm two, I'm two months they're behind. To remember it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, what, what do you think, Brad? Well, uh, it's hard to argue with the science because uh, you know that I'm all about the science as well. Uh, I think that's probably what separates us from a lot of other uh, breakup folks out there, or experts, quote unquote, because um, we do like science and research studies and things like that. So I definitely, it makes a lot of sense. I would completely agree. One thing I object to though is calling it a date. I don't, I generally don't believe in calling um, any kind of encounter with your ex or hanging out with your ex a date. Certainly not at least um, vocally or publicly when your ex is around. Uh, because I really think that that plants the wrong idea when they may not be ready to to know that you want them back. So really, until you've sort of reeled them all the way, 99% of the way to, to being back in a relationship again, I would never want to call that kind of thing a date. I would maybe just say, we, you know, hanging out um, and then take them to a, to an emotional experience or something that is going to trigger happy memories, something like that. I definitely agree with that part. Um, I just don't want to call it a date because I think it's, it's too, too much too soon. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with you. And I, I like the idea. It kind of revolves around what I'm really big on is moving them up the value chain. So right. it's right. you're slowly but surely making – I mean a date might scare off someone too soon Absolutely. you know so Absolutely. Yeah. I, I i have to agree with you we're gonna have to find one where i disagree with you because i think it'll be i think so yeah this is a pretty lame <laughs> fight so far we're right, sort of right. dancing around without actually doing anything <laughs> so. jab jab All right, well, do you have one that we could possibly disagree over? or at least let, let's just try and, and see if we'll disagree I, with I, the next one i one think one. i may have one okay brad so here's the deal i think i have a question that will be a little controversial and i think we may disagree a little bit on so this finally, person right. – yeah, finally. <laughs> this person asks, what should I do when my ex-boyfriend wants to sleep with me? We're still hanging out a lot, but it's not official, and I want him back so bad. Should I sleep with him or shut down his advances? Interesting question. Good question. Um, now, I will say that, that I actually have two separate answers depending on whether we're talking about a man or a woman. So in this case, it, it's, a, it's a girl who's asking if she should sleep with her ex-boyfriend, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So, so in that case, um, what I generally uh, advise is only sleeping with your ex if you're like basically 99% of the way towards being back in a relationship or you're actually back in the relationship, basically to the point where you're feeling so confident that, that you're, you're willing to allow that to happen um, and it won't sort of tarnish your image that you're trying to build up of being high value like we just talked about. But for men, on the other hand, um, a lot of the research says that men and women think differently about sex, and it does make sense when you when you you know think about it in an evolutionary sense. Women, um, you know, they're not as willing to give up sex because it might mean caring for children down the road, right? So, so what I generally say to men is that if your ex girlfriend wants to sleep with you, um, then most times you should probably do that because women often attach emotions and and uh, have a generally more emotional. Um, 
opinion and feelings towards towards sex. So I, I usually recommend in, in the male version of my X Factor guide, and of course I have men's and women's version, both called the X Factor, um, but you know, like you, we have separate versions for each gender and for the men, I would recommend that. But in this case, for, for the person asking this question, I would actually probably say no, you know, don't sleep, don't sleep with your ex uh, boyfriend, at least until you're, you're basically all the way back together. Okay. Can we disagree, please? We can disagree on this. Um, I do not agree that you should sleep with an ex until a relationship is formed. And my thinking behind that okay. is I've seen so many women particularly, and I, I would agree with you on the gender role differences maybe when it relates to sex. I, I, I think maybe men can, as horrible as it sounds, get away with maybe sleeping with, with a woman. But when it comes to women, I've seen so many of them get caught in this friends with benefits situation. And that is when they get in this endless circle where they are essentially – not necessarily friend zoned. It's a little bit more than being friend zoned, but they're in this endless cycle where they can't seem to crawl their way out of it. And it makes getting their ex back so much more difficult. So I'm going to have to disagree with you there. So knockout, I win. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I got back up on a three count there. No, I think, I think so basically what we're, I think we're agreeing on, on, on what men should do with, when it comes to, I, 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 I can buy into that. Yeah. Well, I mean, the science, the science of sort of the, the basically the emotional attachment that each gender places on sex sort of dictates that there must actually be a difference. Men are sort of disposable. You know, we, we don't have the same kind of attachment um, as a result of sex that women do. So we can agree on that and disagree on, on the, the other part. Uh, so at least we've had, you know, exchanged a few blows. Yeah, yeah right, right. And I think it's my turn. So I'm going to, yeah. I got a good one for you. Okay, so, so the question is basically... Um, this is from someone, uh, I think his name is Grab, I think it was, um, and he's asking whether, he, I, I get the impression he's already sort of almost all the way done the, the 30 days of no contact uh, with his ex-girlfriend, and he's worried that, that she's forgotten about him because she hasn't contacted him at all for the majority of the 30 days. He doesn't say exactly, but I think, you know, sort of 25 days into the 30 days of no contact, hasn't heard a peep from her, and is starting to get worried that she's forgotten about him and she's moved on. Um, what do you think? Is he, is he screwed? Um, uh, no, not at all. And, and in fact, I'm really glad you brought this question up because I have had a success story recently where I, I, I remember it like yesterday, I, I woke up and the first thing I got to my email was, Hey, I got my ex back. But when I started like asking questions about like what this person did to get their ex back, I found out that they were married. And so I convinced – her name is Jessie. I convinced her to – I wish I could find a man to match up with, with the guy who's asking the question. But, hey, same principle applies. A lot of people think, hey, yeah. if my ex doesn't contact me during the no contact rule, all – you know, the, the world is ending. But that's not necessarily the case. I actually convinced Jessie to come onto my podcast where I interviewed her. And her husband was, like, literally sitting right there next to her. So I got oh, crazy. both perspectives. And she told the story about when she did the no contact rule. She was really into the 30 days of no contact and pretty much everything that I recommend and you recommend in the X factor, she did. Um, but he did not respond once at all. And I think that had to do a little bit with his stubbornness, but totally, totally. it took one text message after the no contact rule for her to send and bam, he was back on board. It was like literally that right. easy, which I think – goes into this idea of the world's not ending if he doesn't or she rather doesn't contact you what do you think it's exactly and, and i mean let's let's not forget that sort of the answer is kind of going to depend on how serious the relationship was and in the case of marriage right i mean you know that 25 days is not gonna be enough to forget about your spouse right that you've been married to right um which is a little different than if you dated for three weeks and you're in high school or something like that mm -hmm. um but then again, I would never recommend, and I, I talk about this in my X Factor guide about the the appropriate length of time uh, for various situation, situations and, and types of relationships uh, for no contact. Uh, in this case, with marriage or or even in in our situation, it's often a good sign, right? Because it means the emotions are building in your ex, and then when, like you said, when you do finally send uh, a text message or, or get back in contact, um, and I recommend using the texts that I have included in my X Factor program because they're really designed to to bring those emotions out. Um, when you do send that text after the no contact, boom, all of a sudden, um, you know, there's a huge amount of rapport that's been rebuilt and both of you are eager to talk and see one another because it's been so long uh, without any contact. It's kind of cold turkey, right? That's essentially what no contact is. Yeah. And when you end the no turkey and you sort of have the, the, the first hit again of, your, of that love drug with your ex, it, it's very powerful. So, so I would say 
we're gonna have to agree again sadly <laughs> this isn't much of a fight now no um, but i do agree with you on that one for sure um and this is something that i talk a lot about in the video on my website uh, the full length video um i think you're gonna put a, a link to it below the video so you can go check that out um basically i just talk a little bit about no contact the science behind it and how to adapt it to your specific situation so you know there's other things to consider maybe you live together uh, maybe you have you know possessions of your exes maybe kids. bills shared bills kids kids is a tough one um just to say itself promotion here a little pitch um i do have a marriage product as well save your marriage and it's called mend the marriage and for that particular client that you talked about i would probably recommend that they um, use the stuff that in my mend the marriage program um but from 90 we're talking about breaks here right so so 99 percent of the time uh these people are not going to be married but the same same sort of advice applies at least i think it does yeah yeah and since we're on this no contact kick i've got a question for you not sure we will get into a fight on this one because I think we're pretty stern on where we stand. But one of the oh, most I have a feeling I know where this is going. Okay, fire away. <laughs> one of the most asked questions that I personally get is about the no contact rules. Hey, his ex, or my ex boyfriend or ex girlfriend's birthday is on the no contact rule. Can I break it? If I had a cent for any time, every time I saw that that question asked. Uh, is it in my YouTube video comments or or from my customers, coaching customers? I, I, I would be so, so rich. rich. Um, the answer is simple. I think, I, I think we're really going to have to agree on it because my answer is, yeah, go ahead. Say happy birthday. Um, don't do anything more than that, ah. but a quick text to say, you know, like happy birthday. Hope all's going well. Uh, well, you know what? I think we might get into a fight over this one. Oh, all right. Man. Yes. All right. I'm ready. All okay. right. All right. You ready for the right hook? I think an ex or when you're broken up, you should not break the no contact rule to say, because what? purpose does it serve it's not going to help you at all it's only going to hurt you because now instead of going cold turkey like you were saying you have broken the no contact rule and it no contact is meant to stop an addiction you are thinking about your ex too much and by giving into that addiction you are opening yourself up to breaking the no contact again in the future so yes bam knockout again i'm winning this fight easy (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm going to counter on that one um, because I actually uh, there's there's two things I want to say in response to that. One is I think you're you're probably right to an extent, um, and it, it, it probably depends on on where you're at in the no contact and how much contact you've had, you know, otherwise outside of of that kind of message. Uh, because if if you're 25 days in and you said nothing, and you know you were you were really close, and it would be sort of a dick move not to acknowledge your ex's birthday, mm-hmm. then you can't, in my opinion, you have to do something because um, otherwise you just sort of seem cold and and uh, uncaring. Um, there are situations for sure, especially if, if you've been too needy, too uh, clingy, uh, pleading, you know, those kinds of things already, um, then I, w- I would say that you're probably right. In that situation, a uh, happy birthday text could could be either not beneficial or actually harmful. However, something I've really started to, to use lately and recommend is to actually turn it into kind of a, a funny thing. So instead of saying happy birthday, you say uh, in a text message like, Wow, you you must be you know your hair you must be full of gray hairs now or something like that or, or make a joke uh, some something that will be funny or upbeat or fun to remind your ex subtly that you're still awesome and you're still funny and basically just to get them thinking about you in a positive way. So a birthday gives the, a valid reason to text during the no contact and to drop that that sort of emotion building positive uh, vibe through through a simple message and you have a real reason to do it. So. That's my counterpunch. I think we're both still standing, but uh... yeah, yeah. I, I have you ever had anyone who has had a no contact rule end on the ex's birthday? <laughs> on the day. On the I day. Can't say I can recall. Probably I have. because I, I, I have. have coached a lot of and people, but I'll be okay. That's probably the only way I would recommend doing it. But other than that, I think we disagreed on a couple. But I think we have a few more that we might potentially disagree on. Do you have any? I do have one for you. All right. So the, the next question I have is, it's actually not a question that anybody has sent in to me, uh, but I just want to hear your take on it. I'm not sure we're going to agree. Uh, basically, I want to know what you think is the biggest mistake that people make um, if they haven't read the X Factor guide or, or, or your X recovery programs. What is the biggest mistake they make? Well, Where do they go wrong? I alluded to it in the last question of a couple questions ago and that would be breaking the no contact rule like i said the no uh, the no con again i can't talk um breakups are essentially addiction 
because the part of the yes. brain that lights up when you go through a breakup is the same part of the brain that's going to light up in a cocaine addict going through withdrawal. And that's why we have so much difficulty getting over an ex. And so right. the no contact rule is a way to combat that addiction. So you're thinking a little bit more logically and you're in your right mind and you can have a little bit more perspective on even if you want to get your ex back. Because I've certainly, as I'm sure you have, had people come and say, hey, I don't want my ex back, but I'm so grateful that I used your X Factor program, you know, the whole spiel. Totally. Yeah. Breaking the no contact rule is essentially like giving into the addiction, and it doesn't really benefit you to do so unless you are in one of those situational circumstances, like you have kids, or you work together, or just the universe throws it's, you. It's going to gonna make your ex really mad. I think is, is yeah. general, that, right, right? That, that is, I will definitely concede that, but. If it is for just your own purposes of where you have this voice in the back of your head that says, hey, break the no contact rule. What is he up to? What is she up to? I need to know. That is essentially your addiction talking, and it's not going to benefit you at all. What What do you think is the biggest mistake in your perspective? Well, I, I, must, I must sympathize with everybody who's in that situation who's watching this right now. I know it's really tough to stick to no contact. It's not as easy as it sounds. You know, if I just say, don't talk to somebody for 30 days, it sounds really easy. But when those emotions are, are you know, pounding, you, you really, you look for any excuse not to do it. And that's a, one of the reasons why if you search online, no contact, is it a good idea? Lots of, of breakup experts are, are slagging it as a concept because they, they, they know that, that people want to hear that. They want to, people want to hear um, any excuse they can find to get, to break no contact, right? To talk to their ex. Um, don't buy into it, people. That is not the right way to go. Uh, two breakup experts are telling you no contact does work and you gotta yes. stick to it. So I would completely um, agree with you on that. As for the number one mistake, I am gonna disagree with you on that one. Um, for me, the number one mistake is just generally thinking that you can talk your way back in your ex's heart. There is literally no chance that you will ever get back together with your ex unless he or she decides that they want to, whether it's logically, you know, because they come up with a reason, a real reason, a valid reason to get back together, or because their emotions are just too powerful, they can't stand it anymore, and they need, you know, another hit of that, of that love drug you're talking about to sort of just squelch those, those break of emotions and the sadness and heartache. So I think the biggest mistake, generally, not recognizing that it's crucial to have your ex be attracted to you again, and not just you know, physical attraction, but emotional attraction, um, you know, mental, the kind of attraction that you had when you first started dating. Um, that's what you need to rebuild. And there's really no other way to get your ex back unless they're feeling those emotions. So everything you're doing should be aimed at building that sort of desire uh, in your ex's mind for you, which is why we talked earlier about, you know, increasing value and making sure that your ex sees you as somebody who's, who's awesome and who is they, someone they should want to be with. So basically, I think begging, pleading, and just trying to talk your way back into your ex's heart, huge critical error that tons of people make, unless, unless, they, they check out you know, my, the website, a video on my website, or, or one of your programs, or my program, then they'll get the, the right answer, which is build attraction, no contact, all that stuff we've already talked about. Yeah, I would say that what you just mentioned, talking your way back into a relationship with your ex is a huge mistake that people I have this analogy uh, that I use on my website called natting going nuts at texting because that's essentially what it is people just go nuts but I will disagree with you I, I definitely think the no contact Ooh. rule I, I do think okay, the no okay. con yeah 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 <laughs> they're sort of they're sort of correlated so we're kind of yeah yeah we're, we're, we're kind of agreeing and kind of disagreeing at the same time but what do you what do you think, Brad? Do we have another question that we could potentially disagree on? I do. Give me one one second because I want to make one more comment about that. I think generally the reason people have so much trouble with what I just talked about about you know not talking their way back into their ex's heart is because to everyone who's in the moment, that's it's the logical thing to do, right? I mean, if you need something from somebody, how do you get it? Well, you ask or you you know something like that to to try to convince them to give you whatever you're looking for. So that's what feels logical and natural, and it's what everyone instinctually does um, until they get advice from, from people like us who actually know what we're talking about to do otherwise. And most often the prescription uh, for, for what to do is no contact, because that's what's gonna help rebuild that attraction. So I guess sort of, I think what I'm saying that is, the reason, the reason I, I think that's a huge mistake is because no contact is critical, so we're kind of agreeing while yeah. disagreeing. Yeah, so, I like it. That was a good one. I do have another question for you. All right, yes, yeah, so I do have a question, and um, I've got it here on my phone. It's from a real one of my coaching clients. I'm not gonna to, to give her name, but she says, um, my ex broke up with me because he has to move across the country for army training. He says it's just not possible for us to stay together. 
uh, but I still really love him. What should I try to do to convince him that we need to stay together even despite the distance? I love him so much, and I really want to make it work. Okay. So Long distance, common one. Uh, hopefully we're going to disagree. Yeah, so I, like I, I think it's more of a hybrid also because – Getting an ex back in the army is it has its own set of challenges, and all, also it's the long distance. So I, I think I'll tackle both. So if you have an ex who's in the army, or I know she said that he's entering army training, but let's assume that he goes overseas. Well, if that happens, they're going to take his phone away. That's just the way it works. So getting in contact with him is going to be extremely difficult. And you could sit here and say, oh, well, you can just Skype. Him. But oftentimes, if you're in Afghanistan or Iraq, the Skype connection is not going to be the greatest in the world. So one of the best ways to stay present in his mind, because that's really all you can do at this point until maybe he comes back and you can try some of the other tactics, is to send one of those I care for troop packages to his entire squadron so you can get not just him on your side, but all the other guys that he's in war essentially with on your side saying wow that girl is awesome who is she to you and make him feel a little guilty about breaking up now let's switch gears and talk a little about long distance relationships now long distance relationships are interesting because i think they need three components to work the first one is a plan you need both of you need to agree on a plan yeah. because eventually a long distance relationship can't survive on its own forever the other thing you need is time. So if you have a job that won't give you time and you can't really just uproot your job and move across the country, that's going to be a difficult thing. And then you have money. So it it takes money to get plane tickets. It takes money to get gas to travel to see them. So I would say even before you start looking about how to get your ex back in a long-distance relationship, take a good hard look at these three things and see if they are e – if it's even a feasible situation. So what do you right. think, Brad? Right. Because so, I mean, a lot of people that are, that are in that situation, they haven't come up with a plan even before they broke up, right? right. They didn't really sort of think, where are yeah. we going to be in two years? How which are is, we going to get which together the, eventually? the catalyst for the breakup a lot of times. It's, it's crucial. Yeah, absolutely. I also want to make a distinction. I think there's an important distinction to make between uh, the type of long-distance relationship where your ex is, you know, like two hours drive away versus the other side of the world. Yeah. You know, so if, if you're in uh, India and your ex is in Canada, that's a long distance. It's probably unfeasible ever. Whereas if they're just a few hours down the road, you could visit on weekends. That's a completely different story. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's almost not even long distance really at all. Um, I am actually going to disagree. So we can exchange blows on this one. <laughs> uh, I think um, both in this situation that we we're specifically talking about uh, and generally speaking, I noticed this a lot with um, my coaching clients. People usually take their, their ex's words at face value, but I think in this case, and in many cases, if not most, that's not the real reason for the breakup. I think that, that this person's ex, um, the army training and moving across the country is just an excuse um, because they don't want to hurt their ex by, by saying the real reasons why they want to break up. Because really, when you think about it, and I, I like to talk a lot about the, the importance of attraction in romantic relationships and rebuilding your ex's attraction for you. And if that attraction is strong enough, and again, that's sexual, emotional attraction, that's gonna overpower any logical concerns about distance or whatever. And it's not really going to lead to things like what we just talked about. Now, <clears throat> obviously in this case, there really is army. So all the things you talked about apply. Um, he's probably gonna be shipped overseas for six months regularly. So, you know, if they're gonna be together, that has to be something that both of them are okay with. But in this case, it just seems to me a little fishy, and I think that her ex is probably using this as, a, as an excuse to justify the breakup without hurting her. So <clears throat> my advice, and where I disagree with you, is basically I would not even consider what he's said about that. I, I think that the real reasons for the breakup are he's just not into the relationship enough to, to keep trying, to, to try and make it work for whatever, however long he's going to be away in the long distance. And if he was you know, interested in her enough, and if they were madly in love, they'd find a way to make it work. They'd come up with a plan to be together in the future, and, and this wouldn't be the issue. So my take is, most of the time, your exes, what they say after the breakup, for the reasons for the breakup, are either completely false, <clears throat> excuse me, or only partially true. So we disagree, once again, which yeah. is great. Yeah. <laughs> Living up to the title of the video there. Um, right, right, right. All right, so I have our final question, and this is, our, I don't know if it's a question, more of a situation. But this is a big one because it's something I get asked a lot. And I'm really curious to hear your take on it, Brad. So this person is someone I picked out of your YouTube comments. It's a girl. I don't necessarily remember her name, but here is what she has to say. 
what do I do if he's already dating someone new? I know it for sure because my friend saw him with this other girl twice, and they were all into each other. So what does what does the breakup <clears throat> god Brad say? Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I I think we might actually agree on this one. Um, first of all, I think again. Uh, it depends, right? I mean, it depends on the situation. In this case, it sounds like what has happened has actually happened. So it's not just sort of a rumor, um, but rather a firsthand account of something that, that was that really did go down. So a lot of the time, you know, it's sort of just a rumor that you've heard through a friend of a friend about somebody dating, possibly seeing somebody new, whatever. And in situations like that, where it's just a rumor you don't really know, I would say you're better off just to forget about it, don't worry about it. Um, and generally that's my overall opinion when it comes to this sort of thing, because what your ex is doing or saying, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change whether or not, or how you get them back or change your chances, because really you just need to sort of, as the athletes often say in their post game interviews, stick to your game plan, you know, play the right way, those kinds of things. So I would say generally just, it's terrible to ever focus on what your ex is doing. It's a waste of time. It's not productive. Focus on yourself, the things that you can control that will help you get your ex back instead of that kind of thing. But but in this case, we know that this really happened. And I would probably suggest um, that there be absolutely no action taken. You mean, you don't want to say anything to your ex about who they're dating. You don't want to ask them about it. You don't want to get in a fight over it. Because the reality is it's probably a rebound, right? Um, rebound being sort of, you know, the relationship that a lot of people jump right into after a breakup just to, to sort of suppress the, the heartache and the emotions that come from the ending of a relationship. Um, and that doesn't necessarily always mean that you're screwed, right? Um, and again, this, this is actually something that I cover um, a little bit later in the video on my website, uh, which again, you've linked to below. So if you guys want to check it out, you can. Um, it, generally speaking, in a situation like this, I would say it still doesn't matter because you can't do anything about it. Um, so it's not a good thing, uh, but it's also not necessarily a bad thing. So I wouldn't really change your strategy. And I would say the best thing to do is just sort of tell your friend, don't tell me that kind of stuff. I don't want to hear about it and stick to, to the proven tactics, the kind of stuff that's in your programs, that's in my X Factor Guide program and in the video on my website. And just don't worry about, about what your ex is doing. Stick to what you can control. Yeah. Are I we going to disagree? No, we will not. I, I ah, actually okay. agree a lot with what you said. I have a few add-ons. I will say oh. that I used <clears throat> to – I will disagree with maybe one thing that you said. Um, you said that it could be a rebound. And I think that could be very well the case, but I used to be in the, in the camp you were in where I would think, Oh, a rebound, it, it typically ends really well or really fast. And oftentimes they do. The problem with it is research has come out suggesting that rebounds are actually one of the best ways to get over a breakup. So I would say to the person, if she really wants her ex back, Stick to the game plan. Do everything Brad said. Don't focus so much on your ex. Focus more on yourself. But when it does come time in your game plan to maybe communicate with your ex, flirt a little bit. Don't step over that, that gray line. But the more you can not interfere in his relationship but be present in his new relationship, <clears throat> the other girl will not like it. So that would be my add-on. What, what do you think? That, that's a great point. Yes, I agree with that. And I do think that sometimes rebounds can turn into something real. It's just that if you really think about it, I mean, how many dates with various people do you go on before you end up in a serious relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Usually you don't just sort of are not perfectly compatible with the first person that you, you go on a date with. So that the odds are that you are actually more compatible and better for your ex than this new person, because you know that you've already been in a serious relationship. You guys got along well at one point. Things have fallen apart, but the reality is you probably still have an advantage in that regard. So if the key is to rebuild the way that your ex sees you so that you look like a better option. Getting back together with you seems like a better option than staying with the rebound, right? And so something like flirting or, or those kinds of things um, that you can sort of build into your to your you know early communication strategy um, can, can really be helpful in that situation. But I definitely did, I do agree, excuse me, um, when it comes to saying things about this to your ex, you want to be present without actually saying it. You want to interfere, but but not by actually mentioning it, talking about it, trying to discourage your ex, because those are only ever going to just do more damage, Correct. right? Yeah, I would agree with you on that one. And if you're watching this and you're in a situation like this and you're thinking about signing up for my X Factor program, um, you might want to click the special coaching uh, upgrade option that, that you'll, you'll see once you've placed your order and I will help you personally through that kind of situation because there's a lot of nuances and, and you really want to be careful with that type of situation. So 
click the link below uh, below the video and click that upgrade link as well when you when you sign up for my program and I will help you out personally. And I will just say with a real strategy. I will just say that Brad's coaching particularly is one of kind I don't think anyone else out there does anything like this. Maybe there's a handful of people but this is personalized coaching from Brad Browning himself and you will get an answer from him 24 hours pretty much right on average it's around 24 to 48 my i guarantee a response every time within 72 hours and i really like well, i think there are small people that do break with coaching but but what i like is that my program is sort of an ongoing thing it's a subscription it's as needed so i can help you as the situation unfolds you know over over three weeks or six weeks or whatever however long it takes and however long you need my help i'm always just you know just one message away right so a 45 minute Skype call, that's great. Um, but what about in a week when things have completely changed and you need my advice again? Well, you gotta pay for another you know, coaching call. So my program is just more designed to, to help my clients as the, the situation unfolds. And I think that was what sort of makes it unique. So again, yeah, if you wanna sign up for that, uh, just click the link below, click upgrade and you get all the details there. Yep. And thank you for the kind words, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I, we, we are obviously the, the breakup experts you should listen to. So it's been fun <laughs> doing this. And hopefully, hopefully people got something from it, uh, even if we only... I feel, like, I, I feel like I got something from it. So I can't imagine Likewise, someone like, did. <laughs> it's a lifetime learning, isn't it? I like the science. I like how you're into that as well, the science and the research, because I, I really think that you, know, you need to look at that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and we, we need to, to you know, sure adopt and change strategies as, as you learn. So... It's yep. been fun, man. I appreciate yeah, you doing this. Yeah, great. Thanks for coming on, Brad. <clears throat> I will say that I will be linking to his program, The X Factor, below. I'm also going to be linking to it multiple times in emails you will be sent from me. Uh, I can't really stress enough how incredible this program is. And you add in the fact, which I don't even do currently. I've done it on a handful of occasions for certain people, the coaching aspect. So you can right. really get that situation answered because one of the biggest problems or objections I have to a lot of people buying products is, hey, does it cover my situation? Well, Absolutely. this is exactly <clears throat> yeah. what Brad did this for. So thank you for doing that so I don't have to do it. You can have all the people. <laughs> My pleasure. Well, I know you know the questions that I get asked by my coaching clients, and I do really love helping people personally. So if you do need that personal help, I do have a couple slots open right now. I can't promise I will when you sign up for the X Factor, but um, right now I do. So act fast, sign up, and then once you place your order, you'll see that the coaching upgrade that you can select there as well, and sign up for that as long as there's spots available. And um, I also just added, speaking of that, I just added some a new section to my X Factor program uh, that kind of ties into that. It's sort of a what if section where I've got like a ton of just different scenarios you may face. Um, so like 30 or 40 of them on my website uh, in the members area, just listing off what you should do in various situations. So if you don't want to sign up for coaching or it's full, you're still going to get that when you sign up for my X Factor program. Just click the link. You'll get access. Yep. All right, man. That was good. It's been a pleasure. We will do this, I uh, hope, again soon in the future. And I hope uh, our viewers got something out of it. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. We'll talk to you next time. Okie doke. <laughs> Let's do it. Can I do that end one more time? Sound yeah, like absolutely. <clears throat> All right. I think it's probably time to wrap this up, Chris. Uh, thanks a lot for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad we were able to disagree on a couple things. But otherwise, uh, it seems like we do agree. And hopefully our readers got something out of it. So thanks again, man. And we will uh, see you next time. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on, Brad.